Hello programmers, this discussion covers how to compute the mean and median of data from a file that is on a disk. Let's start off with a couple of definitions. The mean is commonly known as the average, so I need to count the number of data items and at the same time get a total of all the data items. Take the total, divide by the count, and that gives us the mean or commonly known as the average. The median is the value separating the higher half of the list of numbers from the lower half. This is very important. The list must be sorted in order to compute the median value. The mode is the number that occurs most often in a list of numbers. In this example, I have 8,000, 9,000, 9,000, 9,500, etc. So there's a total of nine data items. And the total of the data items is 411,500. The mean is calculated as 411,500 divided by nine, which becomes 45,722.22. One of the nice things about computing the mean is that the data values do not need to be sorted. All we have to do is add them up and come up with a total and divide by the count. The median is a little bit different. What I need to do is to have a sorted list. So if there are nine data items, then the fifth item is the one that's in the middle. In this case, if I have 8,000, 9,000, 9,000, 9,500, etc., then the fifth item in the list is 10,000. So the median is 10,000. Working with a list that has an even number, it's a little bit more complicated to determine the mean value because there isn't anything that's exactly in the center. So what I have to do is to take the two different values, one on each side, and come up with the average, and that becomes the median. So the median is half the values that are below this value and half the values that are above this value. Then, if I have 10 data items and the fifth item is 10,000 and the sixth item is 11,000, I take the 10,000 plus 11,000, which becomes 21,000, divided by two, so the median is 10,500. That means for the 10,500, half the values are below that and half the values are above that. Again, we have to have a sorted list if I'm going to determine the median value. Determining the median of a disk file is a three-step process. One, open the file, count the number of records, close the file. Two, identify which records of the file that will be used to determine the median. Three, open the disk file, read and ignore records leading up to the desired record records. Read the records needed to determine the median. Close the file. The mode is the number that occurs most often in the list. And my list right here, 9,000 occurs twice, for example. If there are two data items that occur most often, then I have a multi-mode. I'm not going to cover how to determine the mode in this discussion. When writing the program, there are some similarities between computing the mean and the median. Let's go over the mean. I need to open the file, read each record, and as I read each record, I need to count the number of records and add the total of all those values. I can close the file and compute and display the mean since I have a total of all values and a count of how many items there were. I can just take the total and divide by the count. Computing the median. There are several things that are similar. I need to open the file, read each record, and count the number of records. So this is going to be a two pass. The first pass, all I need to do is find out how many records are in the list. Then I can determine which one is going to be the median. I need to open the file again, skip over the records until I can get to the one that I need, and then read that record. Say, ah, I found the median value, and I can display it. Again, it's a little more complicated if I have an even number because I have to skip all the way and then read two values, take the average, then that becomes my median value. Let's look at the different type of data we might have in our list. So we need to know what the data looks like before we can determine either the mean or the median. Now, if I have a flat file, 
that contains only account balances, well, that's going to be pretty easy. However, I might have a file that has account number, account name, and account balance. The only one I'm really interested in is the account balance at the moment. How is it organized? Well, it could be account number, account name, and account balance. Maybe the file is organized a little different, or I have account number, account balance, and account name. I need to know how the data is organized in the file before I write the program because I have to be able to say I'm going to read each field and I have to know which order that the fields are going to be. If I have an account number, account name, account balance, I can use an integer for the account number because there are no decimal places in this list. I can use a string to read the account name, and then I want to use a double because the account balances have places past the decimal. We need to know where the data files are located. I place the balances-1.txt and balances-2.txt files on my desktop. The fully qualified path and file name for the balances-1.txt file is slash users slash dan slash desktop slash balances dash one dot text. The first thing the program does is ask for the name of the file because the program needs to be run two times. The first time to process the balances dash one dot text file and again to process the balances dash two dot text file. To make it a little easier when running the program, it only asks for the name of the file. The program builds the fully qualified path name and file name by concatenating a string that contains slash user slash and then the login name, in this example, Dan, and then the folder where the file is located. This is the path name. The name of the file, which was read from the keyboard, is then appended to the path name to create the fully qualified path and file name. Looking at the code, I can see that the login name can be obtained from the operating system environment variables. It would be nice, but even though Unix systems came first, Microsoft decided to place the login name in a different environment variable. So the program first tries to get the login name from the environment variable USER. If this does not work, then it tries USERNAME, or username. Here are some environment variables from when I logged in as Dan on a Windows system. You can see the list of environment variables on your system by running CMD on Windows DOS or Terminal on Mac OS and typing the command set. S -E -T. Here is the sample starter code for the project. Two new import statements are needed to have the program access a disk file using Java's scanner. Watch the capitalization for java.io.file and java.io.io exception. The program starts off declaring the variables scanner and file, string, file name, int record count, and int records to skip are used to control the disk file. Three variables are declared for the field names on each record int account number, string customer, and double account balance. Three more variables are declared for total, mean, and median. We have already seen the creation of the scanner object, stdin, in other programs. stdin will be used when accessing the keyboard. The program displays a prompt asking for the file name, then reads the keyboard to get the file name. The fully qualified file name is built from the string slash user slash followed by the login name determined by the system environment variable, the path name determined from the file path constant at the top of the program, and finally the file name read from the keyboard. You can change the file path to something different if you choose to place the file in a different folder. Opening the file and all of the code for disk access is placed in a try block. A catch block is at the end of the program. Several things can go wrong when trying to open a file. Maybe the wrong folder is selected. Maybe the file does not exist. Maybe the file name is misspelled. Maybe the file is locked because it is being used by another program at the time. Maybe the file is on a network and the network is down, and so on. We need to place the disk access on a try block so that an exception can be thrown in case there is a problem. 
The program is creating a new scanner object and opening the file at the same time. A while loop is being used to read the three fields from each record and accumulate the total of all balances. It is also keeping track of the number of records in the file. The while loop keeps looping as long as there is still another record or at least an integer that starts a new record. It is important here to close the file because I will need it to be reopened again when computing the median. The mean is computed as the total divided by the number of records. The catch block will be executed if there is a problem opening or reading the disk file. Display the mean and median values before the program ends. Here is the code to get you started for the median. The percent modulo operator is used to determine if there are an even or an odd number of records. The remainder, when dividing by 2, is either a 1 or a 0. If the remainder is a 1, then there are an odd number of records. You need to complete this part of the program by first skipping several records until it is time to read the record or records when reaching the records used to determine the median value. It is easy to determine the median when there are an odd number of records. Just read and ignore the number of records that was determined by the variable records to skip. Then read the next record. The median value is going to be what was read into the account balance variable. Determining the median when there are an even number of records is a little more difficult. In this example, there are 12 records. The first five records need to be skipped. Then you need to read the account balances from the next two records. It may be easier to place each account balance in its own variable. Find the average of these two values by adding them together and dividing by two. This becomes the median value. How are you going to know if you got the right data? Here's an example of how to use Microsoft Excel to look at the mean and the median of the data file. First thing I'll do is open the file. I'll say File, Open. I have the file on my desktop, so I'm going to say Desktop. Here's a whole bunch of folders and everything else, but my file isn't being displayed. That's because I'm only explaining Excel files. I need to say All Files. Scroll down until I can find the file. In this case, I want balances-1.txt. So double click this and it opens up. Here is the import wizard. It is delimited, means there's some type of a separator between each field. I have a tab separator. I just happen to know that because I built the file. And say next. Here it is for column one, column two, column three, etc. Finish. I'm going to make the B column a little bit wider so I can see my names. If I look at this, it says 220.5, that's really 50 cents. Here's $235 but and zero cents. Here's $235.83. I'm going to select the entire column, say number, set it for number with two decimal places. That just makes it look nice. Scroll down to the bottom of my data. I'm going to put a comment here for mean and the next spot right up at the top there's a sigma that means here's my formulas there's sum average that's the one I want press the enter key this right here is my mean or the common average one thousand one hundred and thirty six dollars and thirteen cents I could do the median but I might end up including this value. So I, you know what? I'm just going to put the median here. If you're smart on Excel, you can figure out how to ignore that one. But for right now, I'll just put it here. Now I want the median. I go back up to where I have my functions. Select statistical is most recently used. I'm going to limit it down to statistical. Look at all these different statistical functions. One of those in there there is median. I'll select median and say OK. OK. There's my median value 
1,151 and three cents. Pretty cool. Why bother using a Java program to calculate the mean and median of a data file when you can just use Excel? Well, maybe you need that as part of a bigger program, or in this example, the main thing is learning how to use Java to read a data file. Enjoy and have fun with this one. This is the end of the discussion for reading a text file and computing the mean and median values using Java. Bye for now.